tour here. Uh, so this is the East Front Car in Southampton Court. Uh, my name is Andy, your driver is Stafford. And most importantly, I'll introduce you to our horses. So you have Royale on the left, and you have Massey on the right. Uh, they are English Shire horses. So the English Shire was originally bred as a war horse uh, during the time of Henry VIII. So they would have carried knights in armour into battle. And because of the size and the strength, they later became the workhorses of England. So you would have seen them ploughing the fields, uh, pulling the canal barges, pulling the big buses full of people in the central cities. And so they were very important historically in England. And then in the 60s, um, after the war, they didn't really have a job to do. Uh, the motor car came in and they became very rare as a breed. To the point where they neared extinction. Uh, they recognised us in time, they began to conserve them. One of the ways they found to conserve them is to provide them work to do, to find them sustainable jobs. So that's really what we do here. We've got seven shires, uh, three of which we work here, Hampton Court, and then four we work at Richmond Park doing agricultural and conservation work. So Royale is 17, uh, Massey is nine years old, Oh, is that young? Yes, yes, oh. still young. Yeah, yeah. And they, they both weigh about a ton and a quarter each. Uh -huh. so, so they're, they're heavy horses. So the, the feature which really dominates the gardens, which you'll notice, are the shaped trees. Uh, so these are yew trees. Uh, there's two forms of yew. Uh, we have the mushroom yew, which we're just passing here now on our left in the moment. Most of those are well over 300 years old and they were planted when the formal gardens were first laid here by William and Mary. And then at the back with the, the yews which grow down to the ground, they're called peppercot yews. And most of those are about 100 years old. Really? Yeah. So they, they were originally planted as very small ornamental trees and then later during the time of Capability Brown they were allowed to grow a lot larger and more natural. Then they were reshaped in recent times. We didn't have this before. Sorry? Just, when did this start? This the, the tour? Yeah. About five years ago. Only five years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've been coming here. We've been here so many times. Ah, so right. we honestly did. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we have visitors from abroad, like she, she came from Saudi, yeah. we take them here. Yeah. And most That's of the place. time we are here. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. America. From yeah. Yeah. We work April to, to October, really? so yeah, we have the winters off, but the summers we work. So the, the, the gardens over the wall behind us, they're, they're the privy or the private gardens of William and Mary. You get a really beautiful perspective of the palace from here. So they've been restored to look like they would have at the time in a French formal style um, and they were restored in 1995. And then if you can see over the trees towards the river, you notice the gilded ironwork screens which are called Tijoux screens. Yeah. And they were made by a famous French blacksmith called Jean Tijoux. Um, the idea behind the design was to create uh, privacy within the gardens from the river, which was a, a busy thoroughfare of its day. Uh, every, everyone travelled into and out of London along the river predominantly. And at the time of Henry VIII, there was actually a main entrance to the palace here, uh, where these trees are now. There was a large wooden building called the Water Gallery. And that was where Henry would have boarded his world barge and gone sailing on the Thames, where he needed to get to. So what's this now doing? They're just uh, actually restoring the ironwork. <laughs> oh, they're going to just drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite fast, isn't it? Yeah. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> yeah, get some speed up when they want to. Cool. So we, we trot them up the hill just to get a bit of momentum going behind us. Yeah. So we, we trotted into Lime Avenue, which is lined by lime or linden trees, uh -huh. and the avenue travels round the gardens and then out into Home Park to our right. Uh, so Home Park was traditionally the hunting grounds of the palace. It was first enclosed by Cardinal Wolsey. Uh, he built the brick wall all the way around, so it's about 600 acres out there. And at that time, they would have stocked it with wild boar and deer and rabbit and hare out there. 
and also at that time there was no formal gardens or canal, so Henry would have actually rode straight out from the palace and into his hunting grounds uh, and caught whatever they could catch and bring it back to the palace table to eat. Um, there's no wild boar anymore out there, but there's descendants of the original deer, they still live out there. So there's about 300 fallow deer and they can trace the lineage of the herd right back to the first deer that were put there. So it's a very old special herd. And it's well, well worth a look if you've got some time to have a, have a walk. It's a beautiful, peaceful place out there. So can you get out there, can you? Yeah, you can. It's open to the public. Oh, know, you right. Have, you have to go out of the palace. Oh, out of the palace. About five minutes walk along a, along a path. Oh, and then you but get it's there. still part so, of the palace. Though. Yeah, it's still part of it. How many yeah. acres yeah. is the land? Uh, so 600 out there. And there's about 60 acres of gardens within the palace bound. So, yeah, it's, um, it's quite a substantial place. <laughs> So, if you, if you cast your eyes back to the palace now, uh -huh. you get a really good appreciation of the two eras, the two halves of the palace. Uh, so the part on the left of the dark brick and the taller tunes, that's the original Tudor part. So about 500 years ago, it was first built by Cardinal Wolsey as a cardinal's palace. Uh -huh. The designs were brought from Rome. Um, to build the perfect cardinal's palace, and so he did in the eyes of Henry VIII. So much so that Henry took it over a few years later, um, and he extended it to about three times the size that it had been originally built. Uh, it became quite a small in the palace complex. Uh, there was a large tower in the privy gardens where the ladies would have watched the hunting of the parkland. Uh, he extended the kitchens and the wine cellars and built a great hall in order to accommodate his banquets. Uh, the tilt yard with its five towers went in, the jousting, and there was the tennis court and the maze. It was a very, very different place at that time. And then 150 years later, when William and Mary came to the throne, uh, they loved the location, but they really didn't like the palace. It wasn't of the, the fashion of the time, the Baroque style was, was in, and they wanted a new palace that would outdo Versailles in France. And so they set to it. Uh, they commissioned Christopher Wren, who designed and began to build what you see on the right, the Baroque Palace. The original plan was to completely remove all of the Tudor Palace, so there would have been no Tudor Palace, and they would have had a much, much bigger Baroque Palace. Uh, what happened was they had very lavish tastes. Um, they overspent during the build, they changed their mind during the build, and they actually ran out of money. Uh, once they'd run out of money, they went to Parliament to ask for more, they were refused, and so they had to make the decision to join what they built of the Baroque Palace to what was left of the Tudor Palace. That's, that's, that's really people tax that's a yeah. tax, yeah. people's yeah. taxes, is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Very <laughs> they went to the Parliament for us, extra money. <laughs> <laughs> That's our tax. <laughs> well, not ours now because it was So once they uh, built the palace, they began to formalise the gardens, which we're travelling through now. At that time, they put 13 fountains into this area. Uh, but if you notice, the Thames was actually lower in level, water level, than the gardens. So they couldn't bring the water up and into the gardens to feed the fountains. So they had to divert the river about 14 miles away, down, downstream, into the gardens in order to feed the fountains. It still didn't work, the water pressure still wasn't enough, and so they had to add a hand pump onto each fountain. This became a very theatrical affair, and so when Queen Anne came to the throne, she removed all but the central fountain, which you see to our right. And you'll notice with the central fountain and the avenue that we're travelling down now at the moment, that they're laid out in what they call a goosefoot style. So it's three avenues which radiate out from the entrance of the palace and into Home Park. And you can notice the central one is actually floating. Sorry? It, yeah, you, 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 you do. Uh, 350 per person to ride on here. Uh, we start just up here, you'll see us stuff in a moment, yeah? So you'll notice that the three avenues laid out in the goosefoot style, and the central one which puts through the fountain, then extends out and back into what they call the long water. A long lake, about a mile or so long. It's finished at the far end, the big plumed fountains, and the trees from my perspective, designed to be a beautiful view, from the Queen's bedroom, which is the 
window with the half drawn blind. So if you're inside the palace and you peer through that window, you can Thank you, it was lovely. Very, very good, nice. very thorough conversation. Yeah. Commentary, I mean. Oh, <laughs> oh good. It's a beautiful drive.